Hello crafty friends, welcome to the seventh video in our ink pad series. So far we've concentrated on distress oxides, we've also looked at Catherine Pooler dye inks and today we're going to look at Ranger archival inks. This is my complete archival ink collection, I keep them. These are the mini ink pads in this tin. I used to have a lot more but I use them so rarely that I decided to only keep my favourites, the ones I used most often, the rest I donated to charity. So what I'm going to do today is give you a bit of a rundown about these inks and then we'll make a card together using these inks and probably some others thrown in. So as I say these are the Ranger Archival inks, they are a dye based ink which means that the colour comes from dye and when it hits the paper it soaks right in and stains the paper. They're translucent, not opaque like the Distress Oxides. These aren't water-based, they are oil-based. So the liquid on the ink pads is a form of oil. And because they have oil in them, they are waterproof once dry. So they might take a few more moments to dry than, say, a water-based ink pad like Distress Oxides or the Catherine Poolers. But once they're dry, they won't bleed or smudge when used with water-based media or on top of other media. They're permanent, so you can watercolour over them, you can colour over them in all sorts of media, and they will stay put. They will, however, smudge with alcohol inks. They are permanent on many surfaces. You can stamp on paper acetate, fabric, shrink plastic, foil and cardstock and probably most other things you can think that you want to stamp on. It's worth giving it a go on a spare piece of whatever you want to add ink to. They are fade resistant so they should not change colour much as long as you don't leave them in direct sunlight for too long. As I said they're acid free which will help them maintain their colour over a long period of time. The inks come in three sizes. This is the mini, then you get a regular size ink pad, and then you get a jumbo ink pad, which is enormous. And re-inkers are available, so if your ink pad starts to dry out, you can re-ink them. Because they are waterproof and permanent, when you want to clean them off things, such as stencils or stamps, you're gonna need to use a special cleaner. Water won't get them off. Baby wipes won't get them off. You'll need to use an archival ink cleaner and Ranger do one that goes with these. So what can you do with them? Like Distress Oxides and Catherine Pula inks, you can blend, lift, swipe, smush, splatter, stencil and stamp. You can heat emboss with them, but only so far as you would need to re-stamp your image with sticky ink and then put your embossing powder over the top, like we did with the Catherine Pooler ones. Personally, I wouldn't use them with an embossing folder. I wouldn't, say, smear them on an embossing folder and then run that through my machine because they're permanent. I might struggle to get the colour off afterwards. And I wouldn't gel print with these. I'm not sure what reaction the gel plate would have to the oil but they would absolutely definitely stain your gel plate. I wouldn't bother water colouring with them because you can't mix them with water. Likewise, I wouldn't do the spritz and drip technique that we did with the Distress Oxides. And neither would I mix them with other mediums, although I suppose you could. If you had a little bit of ink and a lot of whatever medium you were using, you'd probably be able to colour it even though they are not water soluble. You can use them on glossy photo paper though, they do look nice on that. So I'll just show you a few things and then we'll make a card. So I've got my stamp positioner here and I've put a bit of card in just to help you see, hopefully. And on top of that card I've put some acetate to show you that you can stamp on acetate. One thing that archival inks are especially good at is stamping on silicone stamps. Silicone is naturally water repellent, which means that water-based stamps like Distress Oxides and Catherine Pooler inks will bead up on them, but it's not oil repellent. So these oil-based inks should stick to your silicone stamps very well. So I've got my acetate there, and I'm gonna 
use a bit of paradise teal on my first stamp which is just a little present and I will stamp that there press it down and there's a nice stamped image I do normally give these a bit of a wipe with a baby wipe just to get any liquid ink that's sitting on there off and this one is vibrant fuchsia This one is Monarch Orange. You can see there how it's stained the stamp. A bit of Majestic Violet. I would set this aside to dry now because they're only permanent once dry and on a non-porous sub substance like this, uh, they could take a while to dry. So we'll put that over there. I'll show you these on cardstock. So I've given these a minute or so to dry. Hopefully they will have dried enough to be waterproof and they have. So I could go in and colour these with watercolour or a water-based marker and they would not move. So vellum is another surface on which these will be permanent once dry. So they're great for stamping on vellum. There we go. So I'll leave those to dry as well. Again, that's a non-porous surface, so it may take a little while. And as I said, you can also stamp on glossy photo paper with these and they will maintain the gloss. So hopefully you can see that the paper is still glossy. So that is stamping. These are dry on the vellum. They're not quite dry on the acetate yet, but they will dry. Another thing I've stamped on before with these inks is uh, washi tape. Washi tape's got quite a slick surface normally. It's like a waxed surface and I've successfully stamped on washi tape before. I did mention earlier that you can blend with archival inks. So I've got a finger, sponge fingered over here. And you can add those like that. Let's get a blue. I don't think they're as easy to blend with as Distress Oxides or Catherine Pooler, but they are definitely blendable. So there we've got a nice mix of the two colours. You can swipe the ink pads, get quite a streaky look. Might just be that mine are really old and probably quite dry. So earlier I said that you can smush and splatter and lift with these inks and you might be wondering how because they don't mix with water. They do mix however with isopropyl alcohol also known as rubbing alcohol and I've got an old paintbrush here that I don't mind sacrificing to the harsh nature of rubbing alcohol but I hope you can see there that when I spatter it on there, I get a lifting effect like you get with Distress Oxides and with the other dye inks. You can smush them onto a glass mat or a palette, get a wet paintbrush, pick up the colour. Sometimes the alcohol does change the colour slightly, but you can spatter on the alcohol. You need to do all this alcohol work in a well ventilated area. I know some people use alcohol sprays for some techniques and for cleaning, but I don't like to use alcohol spray because um, breathing alcohol vaporing can be quite dangerous. You can smush at a push with these inks. You don't get the same effect, but you can put your ink down on some glass or ceramic, add some ink and they react a little bit like alcohol inks and then you can press that down and pick it up and you get a, a blotchy smushed look it's not the same as you know, smushing with distress oxides but it's a look and if you want that on your project then you can do it because you can blend with them you can stencil with them but this will be permanent on here. But you can get it off with alcohol again. So you could use an alcohol wipe or just tip a little bit onto a rag or paper towel. It will evaporate off there soon enough. 
and clean up that way. You can even get a wet rag and go over your stenciling like that and lift some of the colour off. This darkness should evaporate and go, that's just the alcohol. So now all the alcohol has evaporated, you can see the stenciled pattern and the lifted pattern and that is permanent now so I could go over that with a water-based media and it wouldn't move. Same with the splattering and the swiping and the blending. So they're pretty versatile inks. They're not quite as versatile, I think, as the Distress Oxides and Catherine Pula inks, but they're permanent, which is what I keep them for, really. So I tend to use them in mixed media pieces where I want to do some stamping that I want to be waterproof. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to create a card using these in the way that I'd use them. Obviously, you can use them in whatever way you like. So I've got a piece of mixed media paper here which I've covered in water and now I'm brushing on some salvaged patina distress oxide. This is going to be a light and airy background layer to my piece of mixed media. Also going to add some peacock feathers. And I've got here my bubble wrap smusher which I'm going to use to smush out and kind of disperse the ink. And now I'm going to dry that with my hairdryer. That's still damp, but it's dry enough to add my next layer. More of that peacock feathers and I'll dry that again. And now I'm going to stamp on this using this rubber stamp. This was a charity shop find, so I don't know the manufacturer. I'm not looking for perfect impressions. It's background texture. And I've got Paradise Teal. And I'm going to do a strong stamp and a ghost stamp. As you can see, it has stained the rubber stamp so I'll have to use a cleaner to get that off. So when this dries, which won't be long, this will be permanent so I could put some more wet media on top and it won't lift off. Next I'm going to use some archival ink in Majestic Violet and do some multi-generational stamping. And I think I will splatter with a bit of thistle, which is a deep purple. So again, these splatters will be permanent. And just so we can see the difference, I'm going to also stamp in peacock feathers. So give that a good dry now. So I'm thinking these peacock feather flowers are a bit harsh so I'm going to spritz them with some water and that will lift some of the peacock feathers off, it will cause that ink to diffuse and swim around, it will mingle with, with whatever was there in the background already. I can pick some of it up with paper towel but nothing has happened to the majestic violet flowers which I stamped in archival. Nothing has happened to the paradise teal hearts or the thistle spatters. Now I'm going to add a bit of white acrylic paint just to push everything back a little bit and marry all those different layers together. Because my paper's been made wet and heat dried quite a bit, it's a bit curly and I want to stamp on it. So I've put it in this stamp positioner because it has a grip mat. And now I'm going to stamp some butterflies on my background and I'll die cut these out when I've finished. 
I'm thinking I'm going to stamp them in thistle, which is nice and bold. These are silicone stamps, so they will take this ink well. So I've got dies for all these butterflies. I'm going to line them up, tape them down with a bit of washi tape and then cut them out. There are my eight mixed media butterflies. I did have to trim a couple by hand because I hadn't quite got the dies lined up properly, but that's okay. So I've got a panel here that's slightly smaller than six by six inches and I'm gonna score some lines for a bit of texture in the background. So we've got five lines and I think we have the poking up side poking up. We'll add that onto the front of this six by six inch card blank. So there's going to be a tiny little white border all the way around the outside. And now I'm going to keep this really simple and just have some of my mixed media butterflies fluttering up my card. I'll put some glue on the back just on the body and then the ones that are overhanging I'm just going to snip off and for my sentiment I'm going to use this just because cut out die but I'm going to cut it out of some paradise teal which we used for some of the stamping going to put a bit of white card behind this just because I know the card front itself is white so I could leave it without a backing on but I think it looks better with the backing exactly behind because I want to put it over this uh, raised portion here the embossing that I did or the scoring rather and I don't want that showing through the just so that's going to go in there like that I think in line more or less centered I want to give my butterfly bodies a bit of dimension so I'm going to use morning dew nouveau drops the bodies and the heads so that's today's card done made using a combination of distress oxides and ranger archival inks I hope you found it helpful and I hope you found the whole series helpful I could do another video on embossing ink and I could do another video on the black inks that I have. Let me know if that's something you like because I can come back to this in the future. But as I say, I really hope you've enjoyed the series and it's given you some hints and tips. If you picked up anything new, then do let me know in the comments. Right, I think that'll do. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.